The Trezor One is my favorite hardware wallet and what I use personally to secure my crypto while interacting with the decentralized economy. Setup process is straightforward and with a host of integrations across the Web3 infrastructure, it's one of the most convenient ways to unbank yourself. So if you haven't already, click the link in the description, head over to the Trezor store and pick one up directly from the manufacturer. Today, we'll set it up in four easy steps. First, open the box and download the software. Honestly, opening the box may be the hardest part of the entire process. Inside, you'll find a USB to micro USB cord, a lanyard, and a booklet where you can write down your 24 word seed phrase. Once the box is open, head over to sweet.trezor.io to start the download process. You may have to update your firmware at this point. When you start that process, make sure to look at your wallet and make sure it matches the number on the screen. And if so, then you're ready for step two. Connect your wallet and start the setup process. The Trezor Suite will guide you through this process, but you'll need to write down two things. So have a pen ready and your booklet that came with your device. First, you'll have to set up your device's pin. This can be any number between six and eight digits. You'll be asked to confirm it on your computer screen where the buttons will be anonymized. Use your Trezor device to see which numbers correlate to which boxes. This is a pretty cool feature because it will protect you in case your computer is infected with malware that is surreptitiously capturing your screen. Once you input your pin, you'll be given a list of 24 words to write down. Now, this is very important. Make sure you write them in the correct order because you will be asked to confirm them in the next couple of steps. Also, make sure to keep this somewhere safe. This is functionally a paper wallet that will allow you to get access to your funds if your wallet is broken or stolen. But I cannot stress this enough. Keep the seed phrase and never save them in a document on your computer. Anyone who has access to that seed phrase also has access to all the funds on your wallet. So be sure to keep it safe. But once that's finished, it's time to generate and fund your wallet. You can look at the account details for your Bitcoin wallet or you can add a new currency. I'm actually gonna add Ethereum. Once that's done, you can either buy crypto directly from their newly introduced marketplace, or you can send it from an exchange like Coinbase or Gemini. Quick plug, if you don't already have an account, then you can use one of the links further down in the description to sign up and get some free Bitcoin with Coinbase and Gemini. Once your wallet is funded, now it's time to connect to a Web3 wallet so you can start interacting with more than just exchanges. I'm gonna use MetaMask and I'm gonna assume that you already have the extension downloaded. If you don't, then I'll link a quick tutorial on how to do that in the description. Once that's done, open up your MetaMask, enter your password, then click in the top right and you should see an option to add a hardware wallet. And that's it. You can now use MetaMask and your Trezor wallet to sign transactions on the web. Head over to Uniswap, for instance, and stake some ETH and DAI to start earning interest on your money in a way that you still have custody of your assets, unlike the centralized players like BlockFi or Crypto.com. Please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't. If you comment saying, I subscribe, then you'll be entered in our monthly giveaway for a free Trezor One hardware wallet. If you already have one, then we'll send you Bitcoin or something. Thanks for watching. Try to stay safe out there.